Steve Merrill back here on Wager Talk TV, breaking down your late night West Coast game in college hoops for Wednesday. It's a huge college basketball card, and the last game on the board goes late at 11 o'clock Eastern, but it's a good one in what's remaining of the Pac-12 on ESPNU, Colorado at Washington. I'm going to let you know the best way to play this game and make some money when you do so with this big game breakdown. Just a quick reminder, though, it is $5 customer appreciation Wednesday, which means you get an instant 80% discount on my strongest college basketball best bet tonight on Wednesday. It's locked and loaded right now for my clients. And if you want to buy it on a daily basis, normally it's 25 but because it's Customer Appreciation Wednesday, it's just $5 right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, Colorado's having a nice season, as they often do. They're very strong at home, and they look weaker on the road. For, uh, they're so far 12-0 and at home, just 2-5 and away from home. But it's not because they're a weak road team. You have to keep in mind it's because they have a uniquely strong home court advantage with the thin air and altitude in boulder colorado and for that reason they are often overvalued when on the road yet this line has gone higher on wednesday afternoon if you check the wager talk live odd screen you'll see the colorado overnight opened as a one and a half point road favorite and now it's up to three in most locations but some of the sharper sports books around the world are still holding tight at two and a half which tells me maybe this is an overreaction and i think at plus three or more we do start to get some value now with Washington as a home dog. Over under will open 155 and a half. We've seen a little bit of a move to 156 across the board, and it's understandable. Both teams like to play up-tempo basketball, and both teams have been pretty good offensively this year. In fact, Colorado has been fantastic offensively, 50% shooting, 80 points, 81 points a game, 39% shooting from three-point range. But look at those seven games away from home. They're shooting just 31 and a half percent from three-point range. So once again, that extreme home road dichotomy that I talked about will favor, in my opinion, the Washington Huskies. And Washington's also been a much better shooting team at home, as teams often are in college basketball. Look, these are 19, 20-year-old kids. They're familiar with the uh, surroundings in their home arena, and it serves them well, but they do sometimes struggle in unfamiliar arenas in college basketball. And Washington's a team that's so far 7-2 and two straight up at home this year, 4-6 and six away from home. But they have shot extremely well, only about 32% from three on the road. They're hitting 39% from three-point range at home, and they're holding their opponents to just 27.5%. So Colorado, I do think, will struggle from three-point range. Colorado is an excellent free-throw shooting team, but Washington's pretty solid as well, 73% from the charity stripe this season. And I think that'll enable them to maybe pull the outright home underdog upset. And once again, with this line going from one and a half to three early on Wednesday, we do get some adjusted line value now as well. Take a look at the Washington Huskies at plus three or more. That's your late night game at 11 Eastern on ESPNU. And don't forget my strongest college basketball best bet is available for an instant 80% discount because it is customer appreciation Wednesday. Get my strong Wednesday night college hoops play. And oh, by the way, on a 26 and 11, 70% all sports run the past two and a half weeks. We're seeing it right. Number one this year ranked in college and pro basketball combined units one in 2024. And you get my top play tonight for just $5 right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. And don't forget, follow me on Twitter as well, at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, and free plays daily on my page and Instagram as well. Once again, $5 Wednesday. Don't miss it. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, this is Brian Leonard of wagertalk.com. We're going to head out to the Pac-12 here on Wednesday. Take a look at the Utah-Washington State game. Uh, the Utes are 14 and 5 on the season and 5 and 3 in the Pac 12. Utah has been simply dominant at home with an 11 and 0 record on the season. Only four of those games were decided by single digits. But this is a road game, and we have to look at the way the Utah's played on the road. And away from home, the Utes are vulnerable. Going 2 and 2 on neutral sites, 1 and 3 straight up in true road games. With 11 home games and only four true road games, their excellent effective field goal numbers need to be taken with a grain of salt, and that's what we're doing here. Uh, Washington State is 13-6 on the year, 4-4 four four in conference play. Cougars have an excellent 45.5 defensive effective field goal percentage. That is one of the best in the nation. The enter playoff of a loss at California are looking to avenge an embarrassing 80-58 to loss earlier in the season at Utah, and we're now getting into that point of the schedule where all teams will be playing with revenge. And it's good to be able to pick out the ones that have that ability. And I think Washington State does. But the home road dichotomy of the Utes in the fair number, we're going to side with the host here. Washington State to get their revenge 
over what I consider to be an overrated Utah squad. Let's get to today's big game breakdown. In football, they call it the Iron Bowl, but in basketball, just as important when both sides are good. Auburn at Alabama here this evening. Both sides are good. One side a little more desperate at this point in time than the other game opened Alabama minus one and a half. Moved up to 165 and a half, or excuse me, opened at 165 and a half for the total. The line has moved up. Alabama now three and a half. You can see some fours depending upon where you shop. And the total has been pushed down to 162 and a half. Auburn's on an amazing streak right now. 11 straight wins, all by double digits. Only one of those wins by less than 15 points. Think about that for a second here. 11 straight wins. Only one by less than 15 points. They beat Indiana on a neutral by 28. They beat USC by 16, Arkansas by 32, LSU by 15, Mississippi by 23 just the other day, which was a huge win. Um, But only Arkansas and Vanderbilt were wins that were on the road. Auburn's done a lot of this damage at home, on neutrals, or versus inferior opponents. And none of those elements are going to exist here tonight when they show up in Tuscaloosa. The ultimate matchup here, obviously, I mean, I'm not going out on any limb here by telling folks that Auburn's number six defensive unit right now, that's national ranking, by the way, against Alabama's number one offense. That's what we're all looking for here. Can Auburn slow Alabama down? Can Alabama offensively overpower Auburn? Both of these units have been awesome. It's hard. I generally come on here. And the college basketball show and try to give you guys a comp game, a comp opponent where I can kind of um, derive or take some um, some results from a similar type opponent and apply them to this game. It's hard to comp an SEC foe to Alabama or excuse me, to Auburn that Alabama's played. There are two home games. This is the Crimson Tide. Now, there are two home games in SEC play have been Missouri and South Carolina. Neither of those really look like Auburn. However, South Carolina did come in here with a top flight defense. We saw that defense last night shut Kentucky down. Kentucky only scored 62 points against South Carolina. We saw South Carolina come in here into Tuscaloosa and get destroyed 74 to 47. Again, it's not an exact comp. It's only um, comparable on the defensive side of the floor because Auburn is a superior offensive team to South Carolina. Obviously, Auburn right now ranks as the SEC's number two team in offensive efficiency, and they play tempo, and they're not afraid to go up and down. And to cap that off, Auburn has center Janai Broom, transferred over from Moorhead State a couple of years ago where he dominated there, and he's been dominating here at Auburn since he's a 94-foot handful on both ends of the floor, whether it be offense or defense. So, That's a tough assignment for Alabama there. Last look at this game. I think that the questions here are multiple that you have to answer depending upon which side you want to play or which uh, end of the total you want to play. Can Auburn limit Alabama's three-point attack? Alabama's scoring 37.9, almost 38% of their points from beyond the arc. That's the 26th most in the country. So they're dependent on it. Can Auburn go toe-to-toe in a high-tempo game? They have the personnel for it. We'll see if they can do it against Alabama's extreme tempo. And finally, can Auburn go on the road and beat a rival, not just any rival, your arch rival, that's in a desperate situation at 12-6 and Alabama needs this win. Um, I guess the last question from the other perspective would be, can Alabama defend Auburn? Because Nate Oates has said it plenty of times. They just don't play enough defense at critical times. We'll see about tonight. All of those things have me leaning toward the first half here. I think Auburn comes in. They might get hit get hit early by Alabama. It's going to be a raucous arena. Um, maybe take some time to find their sea legs, so to speak. So I'm going to look at first half here and play the home team, Alabama. Lay two points in the first half. That's the way we're going to look for big game breakdown. Alabama first half, minus two. Steve Merrill back with a free college basketball play for you for Wednesday. Hey, look, it's a big card tonight on Wednesday. I'm going to give you a free opinion here in just a moment. A game that was just a bit outside for making the cut. But I do have some strong best bets tonight on Wednesday, including a powerful college basketball steamroller blowout. And normally single plays are $25. But because it is Customer Appreciation Wednesday at wagertalk.com, you get my top best bet tonight for an instant 80% discount. That's just $5 for my top play tonight. Don't miss it. On a 26 and 11. All sports run the past two and a half weeks, and I'm ranked number one this year in college and pro basketball combined. 
at Wager Talk for 2024 units one. And I've got a strong play going tonight. You save 80% because it's $5 customer appreciation Wednesday. Get that strong best bet right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. All right, another game I was considering, not quite strong enough to be a best bet, but I'll give it to you as a free opinion here for the show. And that's a little mid-major action. We cashed our free play on yesterday's show, by the way. Also, the big game breakdown cashed. Try to keep that run going here with another mid-major play at 7 o'clock Eastern, and that's Marshall. Game number 682 on the schedule. Marshall, the thundering herd, minus the points as a small home favorite here. And they are taking on um, tonight in this game a team which I think is a little overrated, and that's Georgia State. Uh, Marshall currently about a three and a half point favorite. Open three, it has been bet up to three and a half. And Marshall minus the three and a half is worth a look against Georgia State. Two teams hovering out of that 500 mark, uh, but Georgia State's been much better at home. Six and one at home this year, just three and eight away. Marshall, meanwhile, nine and 11 record, but they are five and four at home this year versus just four and seven away. So as is often the case with these mediocre teams, they perform better at home than on the road. And it's not because they have a raucous home environment. It's just because they're usually not very good shooting teams. And that's definitely the case with Marshall. Uh, this is a team that's only shooting 41% from the field. But I do th expect them to shoot better at home tonight. And they're taking on a weak Georgia State defense that's given up almost 47% shooting and 79 points per game away from home this season. Looks like a good spot for Marshall as well after back-to-back -back road losses as a road underdog. Old Dominion and then a bad loss at James Madison. Not a bad, I'm sorry, bad loss at Old Dominion. They're only a one-point dog there, got blown out. But James Madison's having a really good season. So losing is a 12-point dog there, no shame. Taking a big step down in class now against a weaker Georgia State squad. And Marshall also lost their most recent home game two Saturdays ago against South Alabama. This is an angle I like to use when a team's coming off some tough road losses against better teams. Return home after a bad home showing. Usually we get their A game, and I think that'll be the case tonight. Meanwhile, Georgia State on the third of a four straight game road trip, and they're 0-2 so far. Take a look at Marshall minus the points. Lay the short number tonight with the Marshall Thundering Herd at home minus the 3.5. And, and once again, that tips off at 7 o'clock Eastern. And don't forget, if you want my strongest best bet tonight, just $5 because it's Customer Appreciation Wednesday. I'm on a 26-11 and 11 run over the past two and a half weeks, and I'm ranked number one in 2024 in Units 1 for basketball. You get my top college steamroller tonight for just $5. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. It's Brian Leonard of Wager Talk. We're going to head back to the college hardwood. Take a look at Providence at Seton Hall. Uh, the Friars got back on track last time out, as we predicted, with a 162 blowout win at DePaul. That snapped a four-game losing streak, which started with tonight's opponent, Seton Hall. Providence has faced some tough competition on the road, including Oklahoma, Creighton, and St. John's. Our numbers have them as the better team here, uh, so the points are very tempting as the line continues to go up. I believe it opened at 3.5, and, and I've seen 4.5 now with Seton Hall. I like the other side here. I think the points are the way to go in this one. Uh, Seton Hall's Pirates are 13-6. to six. They just had their five-game winning streak snapped at home by Creighton. This is a team all very good. It's a bit overrated in our eyes. The team with a 13-6 record overall. 6-2 in the Big East should have a better net effective field goal percentage than 2.1. This is a team barely scraping by in their victories, and that's something we could use for our advantage in this one as we get what we like to be the better team, catching the points. And especially when you take a look at Seton Hall's uh, record, they've got 11 of 16 non-neutral site games have been played at home. So they've been very home dominant, which they are pretty good at home. But they've been very home dominant. And as with the other game we talked about, that's going to throw off your numbers a little bit. Let's fade what we consider to be an overrated squad in Seton Hall to take the better team playing with revenge. And that's Providence. Give us Providence as our best bet for Wednesday. Okay, for today's best bet, let's go to the Big Ten. Take a look at the Maryland Terrapins at Iowa. Earlier spoke about a desperate team in Alabama, 12 and 6, needing a win. I'd say both of these teams fit that category. Right now, if you look, these two are kind of on the outside looking in. Most bracket projections don't have them in at this point in time, but plenty of time the rest of January, the entire month of February, to make up some ground here when you're playing good opponents every night. This game opened Iowa minus five, 150 and a half to total. Really still sits at five. The total here has been bet up a little bit to 151 and a half. You can find some Iowa five and a halfs out there. So, um, Again, shop as well as you can on these numbers. Let's look at Iowa. I mean, they've been a one-trick pony. 
ever since Fran McCaffrey showed up here in Iowa. Five games this season in Big Ten play. The Iowa scoring defense has allowed between 76 and 84 points in every one of them. So all five games, somewhere between 76 and 84 points allowed. Every game they've played in the Big Ten so far, it's landed on a total 154 or higher. Certainly higher than tonight's 151 required price. Um, the comp game here, I can give you this one, for um, Maryland would be Rutgers. Rutgers owns the absolute worst offensive efficiency rating in the Big Ten during Big Ten play. And they only shoot 39.5% from two-point range. Not from three, from two-point range. They don't even make it to 40% against Big Ten opponents so far. It's important here because that team, that offense, walked in here and scored 77 points against Iowa in Carver-Hawkeye Arena. They only shot 39.4% in that game, so they didn't have to do a lot of shooting to get the 77 <clears throat> against this Iowa defense. And that game totaled 163. Maryland, they're the second worst offensive efficiency team in the Big Ten. So using that Rutgers example, you can see Maryland has opportunities to score points against this Iowa defense. They'll allow it. Um, and Maryland, for what it's worth, they did score 76 at Illinois about 10 days ago. So they, they've got it in them. They've got the capability, even though their averages are very, very low and they're a defensive-minded, slow-paced team. Um, that would be the only real difference between Maryland and Rutgers. Rutgers speeds it up a little bit. Maryland does not. They want to play slow. They want to play defense. But I think Iowa's extreme pace, which has been the case, like I say, during Fran McCaffrey's entire tenure. Um, you get Iowa here at home and their extreme pace, which right now ranks seventh in the nation, it likely is going to force Maryland out of its shell and have to play quicker. Um, when points come that easy to teams, they do generally pick up their pace a little bit. I think there's other key areas here where you can find some point production. Maryland turns the ball over quite a bit, almost 18% of their possessions. Iowa can get some quick points off of that. And Iowa can't defend anything inside the arc. So for Maryland tonight, a couple of guys to keep your eye on. Their center, Julian Reese, is a beast down low. He probably has a nice game here. And their point guard, their um, best offensive player, Jameer Young, he can get into the paint and score uh, against this defense, I would think, with somewhat rather ease. So a couple of guys here that should be able to benefit against Iowa, a team that allows, and this is the worst number in the Big Ten, defensively they allow 59.4% of two-point shots against them to be made. That's why the center is so important here. That's why the penetration of Young is so important here. I think the final look, um, Iowa's tempo is going to override what Maryland likes to do. Defensive-minded opponents just come in here and constantly get overwhelmed by Iowa's tempo. Their three-point shots, they play into it. I think Maryland will do the same. Iowa, in their five games in the Big Ten so far, they've either played slow tempo, defensive-minded, or bad shooting teams. Excuse me, four of the five, because the fifth one was Purdue, and they're good at everything. But they've played teams with characteristics of Maryland. Every single game is going over the total. Figures to happen again here tonight. This is the lowest total in Big Ten play that I was played to all season long at 151 and a half. So we're going to play it that way. Take Maryland at Iowa up and over 151 and a half.